Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Peter, a 15 year old hobbyist game dev. For the past year, I've been working on making my dream game using Unity, a pixel art survival sandbox. On this channel I plan to post devlogs showcasing progress on the game, as well as some of the programming, giving tips and showing how I implemented certain systems. Firstly, for a bit of background about me, I'm just a guy who's always been fascinated by how games worked, and I'd always wanted to make my own one day. That's why in lockdown in 2020, I installed Unity and gave it a shot. As you might expect, the first few projects didn't turn out so well. Looking at some old footage here, my first ones were questionable to say the least. Here was my first attempt at this game. The art was absolute garbage, and the game didn't even work properly. I only ended up doing that for about a month though, and then I completely gave up on game dev until the start of 2022. And that was when I began to take it semi-seriously, making a joke multiplayer game which I played with some of my friends, which was actually quite fun, but really buggy. I mean, like, really buggy. What was good though, was that I learned a lot about how to code properly, and so in November last year, I decided that I'd retry making my dream game. That's what I've been doing for the past year, and this time, I actually plan to make it work. My game will be quite similar in style to games like Terraria and Stardew Valley, featuring elements of building, farming, fishing, mining, and also some combat, although that won't be the primary focus. I want the game to have a fairly relaxed atmosphere, and want players to choose what to do rather than forcing them into a linear progression system. A major aspect of the game will be designing and building up your village, having NPCs move in, talking to them, completing quests, trading, doing events, and so on. Recently, I've been doing a major refactor of nearly all of my code which is the main reason why I only have this much gameplay after a whole year. I've also remade the art about 10 times, keep changing the plan and keep coming up with new ideas. I'll show you some of the code, but to prevent you from falling asleep with boredom, the main thing I'd like to demonstrate is how I manage loading an infinite procedurally generated world. The way it worked before was that I stored about 100 2D and 3D arrays. I had one for the tiles, one for the biomes, one for the decorations, and so on. Everything had to be a fixed size, because I generated the world at the start of the game using Perl and Noise. For those of you who don't know, Perl and Noise is an algorithm which generates a bunch of random values, but rather than being completely random, they're done in a way which makes it appear smooth. This makes it useful for working out things like the height of mountains in a world, and it's what I'm using for my game. Long story short, the old code meant that I could only make the world quite small or else the game would freeze for half a year when you tried running it. I also didn't have a way to unload tiles when you left the area, so if you explore too much of the world, your PC would sound like a plane taking off. That's why I updated my code to use a cleaner and simpler approach. The world is now split up into 8x8 chunks, each of which can have its own heights calculated using the same method. When the game is running and you enter a chunk, it then generates a height map for a new chunk based on the chunk's position, which I did have some minor difficulties with. It then fills each chunk with objects like rocks and trees, except this time it won't have to cause extreme lag because you're only generating it for the one chunk rather than the whole world. This now means that I can have a theoretically infinite world, and can have separate subworlds like caves and dungeons. Since I've redone all the data from scratch as well, I can actually save and load data as I considered serialization when coding it. Now that I have the foundations of my game laid out, I'll begin working on the actual gameplay, which is why I figured now would be the perfect time to start making devlogs. On the topic of devlogs, my next one or two will cover NPCs. I'll have to draw sprites, make new tile sets and house types, code village detection, NPC dialogue and their daily routines. I do want to keep you guys updated so I'll post devlogs as frequently as I can, but they definitely won't be coming out every week as I do have to focus on school and would prioritize